This is the Avenue Lawn Tennis Club. We've got 17 courts, 10 of which are grass, seven are all weather courts, including four artificial clay and three synthetic grass. We have around a thousand members that enjoy playing tennis, squash, and taking part in fitness classes at the club. I think tennis clubs should be more open to innovation and technology. From my experience here and seeing what it can do for a club and the local community, it's massive. Our plan when bringing Winfield to the avenue was to try to attract a younger demographic. We're looking at trying to get teenagers playing more tennis, getting young families into the club, as well as trying to help players that are currently members to get more out of their sport. Some people were like, oh, what's that white box over there? And then I explained it and they were like, no way does it do that. And then they tried it and they're like, mind blown. This is such a bit of amazing equipment. I think the Wingfield um, has generated quite a lot of new interest. When it was brought along, Court 11 was always booked out and was the one that we was in high demand for everyone to have a go at it. I've seen lots of players comparing their stats at the end of their matches and then everyone wants to go watch little snippets of themselves. It's literally gold dust to get on that court now. Like our booking system is a week in advance and you have to be there at 6.59 and then boom, it's almost booked all the time. We have a real mix of people at the club that use the court. It might be that they bring their ball machine down to practice their forehands and backhands, whereas others come alone with a few balls to practice their serves. But the most common use for the Wingfield court at the club is during match play. The interesting stats I thought were really on my serve because I've always had trouble with my serve, um, mainly with the toss up. Um, and I never thought I was putting that much speed on it and that much accuracy. So I was pleasantly surprised that I was reasonably consistent. To see actually where I'm placing my serve when in actual fact I'm not really thinking about it is interesting because I'm actually getting angles that I am not thinking about. So now if I actually put my mind to the court and say I'm going to hit here, I'm going to hit here, I'm going to have even more success as to where I'm angling my shots and things, which has been really useful. The reason for not putting a charge on the Wingfield court is we want to encourage people to play tennis more often and get more out of their games. As soon as you put a charge on something, it's a deterrent. Although people would be more than willing to pay for it, we want to give people this free service so that they can play more tennis. One thing I think tennis clubs in general could do better is to try to stay ahead of the curve like we have done here. Investing in something like Wingfield can make tennis far more attractive, not just for everybody, but more so for the younger generation who are the future of tennis. The Wingfield court can become addictive in a way. Once you get on court and you see your rankings and your scores, you just want to get better and better. And as coaches and clubs, what we're here for is not just encouraging people to play tennis for the first time, but to stay in the sport for longer and to play more frequently. And in my opinion, Wingfield is one of the best ways to do that.